Hey folks, Randy here with Doing Cut and Trim. So today I got a couple things I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, the first thing I wanted to cover is um, I've got a whole bunch of buttons and gear on my uh, mower. You see here I've got that button on top, I got the Increda bottle, and then down below I've got another switch. That switch down there in the bottom is to keep the blades always on whenever I hit the bail switch. That button is just if I hit it, the blades will go on one time. But like I said, the switch just keeps it on whenever I pull the bail switch. And then I've got the Increda bottle, which I am horrible at pouring, but if I have, uh, I didn't realize that was going to be that fast. <laughs> but uh, if you saw that little rubber thing that was wrapped around the Increda bottle, matter of fact, hold on, we're just going to pause this right here. And as you can see, I've got a Forma funnel. This is the only way I'm able to use the Increda bottle without spilling like crazy. Um, I found this on Amazon for like, I think it was like 15 bucks. And it's a, a funnel. You can just kind of form it into whatever shape you want, kind of like a Gumby. Um, and then, you know, use it for, you know, pouring gas or oil changes or whatever. And then once you're done with it, you actually can just kind of like roll it up. And then I just kind of, oh, you saw, I just kind of put it in there with the Increda bottle. And, you know, that's how I travel around with it. It's the only way I can figure out how to use that thing without uh, spilling all over the place. Uh, the guy from Incredibottle, he actually showed me a video on his Instagram uh, uh, where he pours the bottle and he doesn't spill. I don't know how he does that. Although I do suspect there wasn't much gas left in the bottle when he made that video. I do suspect that was the case um, because it does get easier to pour the more empty it is. But uh, anyway, I, I suspect that's what was going on there. Anyway, but that, you know what? That doesn't have anything to do with this video. Uh, that was just an aside, and I happened to have that clip on my uh, 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 phone. Uh, so this property, I actually wanted to talk about um, with this property specifically. This is one of those lawns where a walk behind really is the better option as compared to a stander. Um, and it's for a specific reason. Um, this property has... I call it a multi-zone property. I, I don't know uh, if you guys... I, I don't know if there's another term for that. But it's like... Uh, I, I think of different areas as zones. Like, uh, take for example a house. It's a square lot. And it's got a front yard and a backyard separated by a fence. To me, that's a two-zone yard. You mow the front, you mow the back. You're only... You know, you're just... that. That's all there is. But then there's some properties like this where... You've got the one side of the driveway, which I'm on now, and the front of the house, like the front part of the house before you get to the uh, uh, driveway. To me, that's one zone. And then, uh, then on the other side, over here to the right of the walkway, that's another zone. We've got a yogurt. Um, and then uh, they're on the other side, uh, uh, like if you go down further, down here like his backyard he has a fenced in backyard and then a gate that leads to an even further down backyard um this would be a one that would actually be really nice to have a shoot blocker on because when i go back up i can't have the blades activated because i don't want to spray that guy's mulch beds um but then there's even another zone uh to the left if we went around this corner which i can't remember if we're going to do or not yep see that little fenced in area that's another zone i actually only do that with the trimmer um so there's a this this is like a multi-zone property and so like multi-zone you know it's basically multiple areas where you're you're going to mow the whole area and then move on to the next place and also it's got almost like its own set of trimming you know um and so for properties like this which I'm not sure how long it'll be before you guys actually see it but this property uh i can't imagine trying to get a stander into his backyard uh technically there is an easy way and i'll discuss it once we get to that uh point in the lawn but i can't imagine a situation where i would be comfortable putting a stander in this guy's backyard um i think a push mower or push mower a walk behind mower is much more uh useful for lawns like these this is like, like this car is taking forever. I might have to speed this video up at some point this is this takes forever I still haven't put the uh, 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 what do you call it I still haven't put the cover on the trash can I love having that trash can there though it's really useful 
I just gotta grab a grabber, but I think I need a folding grabber so that I can put it like, and then make like a like a little basket type thing um, on the mower that I could store the grabber on. I'm wanting to make a whole bunch of work, do a whole bunch of stuff to this mower, and I'm not sure how much longer I'm gonna have it. But we're not discussing that. I have said before. Okay, so here's why I don't think a stander is that useful because on the property like this, because that's a step. That's like a 10 inch step or whatever. And maybe you could get a stander up and down that, but I don't see how you do that without damaging stuff. Um, you know, I, I can do it with a walk behind, no big deal, because worst case scenario, I can help lift it as the tire tries to fight its way up. But I just don't see how you could get a stander through there. Now, when I'm doing the other part of this lawn, you'll see there is a way we could get a stander into all these areas, but I'm not for that method so you see like here this this is another zone like we're gonna mow this whole fenced in area um, before we go on to like the rest of his backyard so it's just kind of a I don't know it's just kind of an odd lawn you know it's one of those things where it was like if I was actually visiting properties and not just uh, quoting them online I theoretically would charge more for this yard just because there is extra trimming. But honestly, this yard doesn't even take me that long. Um, how long is this video? I think this video is like 13 minutes long or something like that. So, I mean, that's 13 minutes of mowing. That's actually more mowing than well, longer for mowing than I normally have. I'm normally like 12, 13 minutes for trimming and then another seven or eight minutes for mowing and a minute or two for uh, blowing everything off. Oh, uh, but, uh, I don't know, lost my train of thought. It's funny because there's stuff in this video that I want to say, but I don't want to forget it because I don't take notes. So I keep thinking about it and it's making it hard for me to talk about what's happening now. <laughs> so there's one last strip over there on the left, but I'm just going to hit it at the very end. So now we're going to go to, I guess, the biggest, most open part of his yard. And so this is actually going down a bit of a hill, and the brakes on my uh, mower are a bit wonky, so I have to be a little careful when I'm going down this hill. Um, just because, you know, if, if the mower goes into the water, it's going to be a bummer for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, as we come back up here, you will notice that, you know, on the right, from our perspective on the right there's no way to get the mower into his backyard but on the left you notice the neighbor uh he doesn't have any fencing of any kind so you know i could get the stander uh into this guy's backyard uh you know just going basically just going into the neighbor's yard but i am strongly against stuff like that you know, I'm a big respecter of people's properties, and I do not walk on other people's lawns unless I have written permission to do so. Um, I know that might seem a little uptight and a little ridiculous, but that's how I do it, man. I do not go on other people's lawns. And, you know, what? like when you watch these lawn care videos... And you'll hear like, oh, it got yelled at by a neighbor. It almost always, almost always involves the lawn guy going on the neighbor's property. Either to turn around or they put clippings into the neighbor's yard or whatever it was. They did something that involved putting stuff on other people's lawns. And people don't like that. I don't like it. You know, if somebody puts something on my yard, like if they, you know, I don't know what I, I don't know what it would be, because I got fences on both sides of my property, so I, I don't know what that would be. But you know, if you if you go on my yard, I'll, oh, I'll, 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 if people are standing in front of my street, because like maybe they parked in front of my house because they're at a party, and then the party's roll wrapping up, and they're standing by their car, and one of them's standing on my grass, I don't like it. Get off my grass. You know what I mean? So I understand that people don't like when you go on their property, and especially if you're turning the mower around, maybe you mow at a different height than they do, or maybe you're not the greatest operator of zero turns and you're leaving that swirly, you know, dirt grass mixture from not doing it right. People don't like it. 
So just stay off their lawn. Like that that's what I do. So in theory, I could you know, ask the neighbor cuz that's the only way I would do it. I would ask the neighbor like, "Hey, can I uh do you mind if I, you know, drive along like right up along this guy's fence and uh, so that I can get in the backyard." And maybe the neighbor would be nice and be like, "Yeah, yeah, man, no problem." Or maybe he'd be like, "Stand your ground, get off my lawn." Or I don't know, who knows. I just assume not even deal with it. You know, like I've never even the, like the guy, the lawn that I'm cutting. I've never even met this guy. I'm gonna go meet his neighbor, and I haven't even met him. I mean, <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know, I just, I just that's not that's not my thing. So lawns like these are perfect for a walk behind mowers because you get everywhere you need to go. You know, it's it's not hard to go up steps with a walk behind mower. I've actually, I've actually, with this walk behind, I've been able to go up two steps using this mower, uh, using my special method that involves brute strength and good tread on tires. <laughs> so, am I done yet? Good God, this takes forever. I normally do these videos at like uh, double speed or even triple speed if I really don't feel like it. <laughs> And, uh, I don't know, for reasons that defy explanation, I decided to do this at regular speed. And so now I'm kind of ready for this video to be over, but I think it's still got like two or three minutes left. So, I don't know what we're going to do, man. It's going to watch me mow. In case anybody was wondering, that is a uh, Lowe's lid on an old Home Depot uh, uh bucket. I got the Lowe's bucket too, but I just haven't gotten around to switching buckets. So I don't, honestly, I'm trying to, I'm having a hard time caring because I am really, really not planning on, oh, don't talk about getting new mowers. Do not talk about new mowers. Ugh, don't do it, Randy. Okay. So now we're done. So actually we're not done because I got this little patch right here that I got to mow. So mow that real quick. Now we're done. And now I gotta go up the the step. I didn't do that damage, by the way. This is only my like third time cutting this lawn. So what I like to do is I lift up, get as high as I can, get over that step, and get my wheels up against the step, and then I floor it and pick it up at the same time, and that gets me over. There you go. I would say it's easy. But it's only easy if you got the muscles to do it. <laughs> oh, look at that nice truck. That's a good looking truck. It's a unique truck. I have to be very careful and be nice to people because that's the only truck that looks like that in my area. So, gotta be cool. So, thinking about getting rid of the gate though. I like the gate, but good God is it heavy and it makes that truck really heavy in the back. So, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud at this point. Ah, uh, video's over. Man, I really overshot that, didn't I? <laughs> it's Randy with Dolan Cut and Trim. Have a good one.